Well, welcome back. It's the end of September, the last day of the month, 2009. And as you know, our last Wednesday of every month, starting this year, we actually feature our sister show, Artist Review, which has become so popular. And we're real pleased for those who haven't seen me in a while. And you've seen me in many younger versions when I was much thinner and more attractive. Uh, I hope you enjoyed those shows. Uh, I do a little vacation and... Uh, and welcome and glad to be back. So all of our shows will be back live. The Restaurant Review will start next week. Just a little programming note. So for those who've uh, hopefully enjoyed the best of the last few weeks, we should, we've should we got a brand new restaurant for you next week. So stay tuned. Okay, but enough about that. Again, uh, it is the last Wednesday, September of the month of 2009. And we're very pleased to have an artist today by the name of Dan Tague. And he is uh, coming to us via... Jonathan Ferrara Gallery, which we really appreciate. Dan, welcome to the show. Thanks for inviting me. Great, great. Well, we really appreciate you coming, especially Dan has really come on short. And Jonathan was very um, helpful because our scheduled artists for this month uh, couldn't make it as of last week. So we were very, very pleased on such notice. And um, Jonathan was able to, I guess it's a young man who's done several shows, including presently. So let's let's get in. Let's get to know him about it. First of all, I understand you're you're a native. We're so proud of that. Uh, yeah, yeah, I am. Okay. I'm, uh, I was born and raised uh, on the West Bank and Harvey. Uh, but and you moved back to the East Bank. You I realized moved, where the action after, was. Right, yeah. During <laughs> a school at uh, University of New Orleans, I, I, uh, yeah, I was in New Orleans. I was born in Orleans and then moved back to Orleans. Yeah, so. that's, that's the way it goes. That's the way it goes. Well, tell us, uh, how did you get first get interested in art? Um... It's hard to say. I mean, as a kid, you know, I'm you're, always interested and make, in that making, story. you know, making drawings as a kid. I don't, been, I mean, and uh, inventing things out of things around me, and uh, you know, finding cars and uh, and you know, making guns out of sticks and adding paper to make them ray guns and like transformers. Yeah, absolutely, early right, transformers. Right. I mean, as far as art, I mean, I wasn't so sure what what the word of art meant. I guess you know, right. you think of art, and I always think of like you know, oh, yeah. abstract uh, and a beret, yeah, yeah, and you exactly, know, so exactly. yeah. early on, I wasn't sure I was making art. And until uh, yeah, I went to high school and I took a, an art elective and I had a great teacher at uh, Archbishop Shaw, um, Mr. White. And then uh, from there... And there was that like just art appreciation? Or it was a, a studio art. Yeah, it was a studio oh, okay. art class. Yeah, it was, right. it was really great. Yeah. And then, there, I mean, there was also an aspect of history and appreciation as well. So you get a, you know, a right. good background I think it goes hand with in the hand, medium. Absolutely. You know? sure. I really do. Some people think it's just yeah. the studio stuff, but mm -hmm. the appreciation of, of the masters and the non masters, the history of that evolution. Certainly. It yeah. affects everyone, really right. does. Okay, so when did you start taking it? I mean, seriously, I actually started doing um, some stuff. I went to school, I went to Delgado. Um, I offered me a, a fellowship there wow. so I went to Delgado um, and I was studying I was taking a lot of math and science classes and, and pursuing to be an engineer and uh, again with the electives I took some art classes and then it was during the first drawing class it was it switched all my major to well, art classes and then from there I just went I to a pre-Katrina they had a wonderful art program at Delgado in fact, I know the lady who's the executive director of that area, and I really haven't been invited, maybe just off the list, but I know they have a great drama, they have a great communication, great mm -hmm. culinary program, but I hadn't heard much about the art anymore. I remember we used to go up to the top floor, the, the beautiful attic with the high ceilings, and they have great, great gallery yeah. exhibitions of their students. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you don't follow it anymore since you're in the, in the real world, but uh, <laughs> maybe uh, I'll have to give a call to that young lady because uh, uh, Carolyn Gennady, and because... Uh, I really miss it because it was a great local That's place to go. Space is a tremendous, yeah, just too. a tremendous space. Yeah. Okay, now since then, uh, you started doing your own, doing your things, but uh, you've really become affiliated with Jonathan Ferrara for about how long now? Um, but I mean, after I got, I went to UNO and and was uh, um, actually pursued grad school there as well. So I got my master's there as well, and I met Jonathan somewhere in grad school. I got it. And uh, one of his uh, directors of his gallery was uh, in the same program I was in. And um, I guess, you know, she put me in a show there, and then the rest is... Well, you told me a, a, a kind of fun story right before the uh, show. I don't know whether you want to share it involving Katrina, but it's always, to me, like I say, so <laughs> unusual to hear a positive, fun kind of story about <clears throat> Katrina. And I don't know if you want to share that with the folks or sure, not. Sure, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so I, I was I, uh, I was in a few group shows with Jonathan over the over like the last, you know, uh, eight, eight or so years, eight or ten years. 
And, um, and I was doing a lot of uh, curating in other, other venues around the city, and Jonathan asked me would I like to curate something there. So I, I curated a show called American Muscle that involved like hot rod cars and superheroes and pinup girls. And, and um, so then Katrina came while the show was in the gallery, and we all evacuated and came back, and the show was still <laughs> on and st still on the strongest seat in Not the window. Not a lot of attendees at that time. Well, and the building next door fell down, <laughs> and, the, and and you know the well, gallery wasn't harmed at all. And no the, obstruction the of view was, of, your, yeah, of right. your work. <laughs> and so the show is still going on in the gallery. It's still going anyway, strong. So I got an, an extension on the gallery. Sorry, folks, for that for that person who owned that building. But I just think it's an upbeat star. Mm -hmm. And nowadays we need some of that style, especially. Yeah. Okay, well let's let's come presently. And for the folks who, uh, in addition to the uh, 14 pieces you brought today, uh, you obviously have a website, one link through Jonathan's, not through his website, mm -hmm. but what is your own website if someone wants to get uh, contact you or, of course, see a lot more of the exhibits that you've done either previously and the present? What's your website? It's dantigstudio.com. And that's T-A-G-U-E, Dan, D-A-N-T-A-G-U-E. Hopefully we'll see his yep. name soon. Uh, also, by the way, the audience, we didn't say we are going to bring up the uh, f open phone lines because this phone, this particular program has gotten pretty good uh, feedback for people who really want to speak to the artist. So the director will flash those numbers up several times due to the screen and don't hesitate to give us a call, and Dan will give you more information about his work and, and on the exhibit. Now, as for the uh, website, also e exhibiting. You've been exhibiting uh, the newer part of the, the pieces you brought, which we'll see near the end of the show today. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's been at Jonathan Ferrer. And what is Jonathan's address? Do you know it? I didn't look it up. I mean, I'm taxing it's, uh, it. It's 7, 740 Julia Street. Julia, yes. Okay. It's right. on the corner of Chapatulas. Chapatulas. It's one, I couldn't remember one gallery Chapa, off Chapatulas, Chapatulas and, and Julia. Julia. Very, very, very nice. Uh, familiar location, especially with the art community. All right. So now how much longer is, is your exhibit going to be there? Or is it down already? The, sh the that exhibit, yeah, the latest exhibit is down. Ah, okay. Yeah. So, folks, it's done already. even more importantly, you're going to have to go to the website and or pay attention to the show so you can see <coughs> what's obviously what you miss. It's got a few uh, pieces stored, so there's a few pieces I'm sure. So, somebody you'd be happy knocked to pull it off. So do you have it. anything from Dan Tag? They might, they might be happy pull to pull something. You can see the actual thing, yeah, okay. certainly. Plus, Dan did inform us that he's going to be participating in. Prospect 2, which is starting next November. For those who were awed last year by the Prospect 1 here in our city, that is continuing and it will re reassess. So he'll feed back to us through Jonathan and whatever what he's going to be doing. Where is he going to be showing that? So even though that's a long way off, the important thing is go to his website and if you want to see some of his exhibits between that time and then, you know, I'm sure he'll answer those questions and give you a calendar of what else he's got scheduled. Okay. I think that's about it. Let's, the most important thing is let's go ahead and we're going to take a look at the uh, first piece, a fascinating piece. And this is probably going to be hard for the uh, for our cameraman because um, of the, as you ah, see, there you go. Yeah. Let's see if we can get it. Uh, it's very hard to tell. And first of all, why don't you tell the name of the piece, if there is one. Uh, the piece is Don't Yell at Me. Don't Yell at Him. And from here... There's no indication of why uh, someone would say, don't yell at you. So give us a little more detail. What exactly? I mean, I can only see lines. Hopefully mm -hmm. our audience can see or read between the lines. Uh, on, this, <laughs> on this monitor, I can see a lot better. As you can see, there is an, uh, which we thought was a sketch. We thought a pencil sketch. We're totally wrong. First of all, tell us what the media is. That's um, even more important. The medium is uh, lines cut from a loose leaf page and human hair. Sandwiched between glass. There you go. Uh, that is amazing. I, uh, and the actual, is there a uh, definable subject? Um, it's actually this, the screaming hand is a, it was a popular uh, 80s skateboard motif. Ah, uh, okay. And uh, by a company like Santa Cruz Skateboards okay. back in the days. I don't doubt they're still around <laughs> anymore. But um, so it was a show about adolescence, and I was, I was actually a, a public school teacher at the time here. And um, in Jefferson Parish, actually, and um, so I was, you know, getting a lot of like art projects we had to do. But it seemed like a lot of the creativity came through. I was, when I was looking through their notebooks of other classes, when they would show me drawings they had, when they were bored in math class, it seemed like that's when the true, you know, grit was coming out, and they really yeah. had something to say. So uh, I was just kind of building off this idea and thinking back of my own like art, like you know, my drawings probably didn't start in art class; it probably started in science class, which is you know strange. Wow. So that's when I created a series of. Um, of the loose leaf works 
drawings on loose leaf and um, and that fascination of, of making making something quite not what it is so using hair instead of pencil and that just stems back from when I was a kid and you know finding things around a house and make them into something else into a fort or you know yeah. ray guns um, so difficult and it reminds me the first piece uh, work art I collected from my mom was a f back in the 60s it was a, a French oval of a an old masterpiece and we thought it was a pencil sketch or charcoal sketch of mm -hmm. a typical uh, a lady bathing. When we had to have a refrain, we found it was actually done on a French lady's nylon stocking. Oh, wow. And wow. I kept saying, do you know the amount of it's work great. that must be? I mean, we underestimated. We just enjoyed the value of the beauty of the, sure. of, the, of the piece. But how much work, how much detail? So I can empathize here, similar things in regard to doing this. Okay, now you've got it lovely matted and also in a, a nice blonde frame. What are we talking about dimensions? What about? Um, it's size of loose leaf, so it's 8.5 by 11. That makes the sense. Image, yeah. I and uh, yeah, speaking of work, it's definitely uh, considerably more, <laughs> many more hours than uh, than a sketch on paper. On paper, that's what I'm trying to get across. Hopefully, the audience got sure, it. Sure, that, uh, Not that uh, there's anything wrong with pencil drawings, but at the same right. time, from t complexity and time, mm -hmm. we're talking about a substantially large yeah, number of, of hours in differentiation. Yeah. Okay, excellent. So this was this would consider uh, about what time uh, what did is, you say? What period? This about? this is uh, like this is 2005. This is the piece I was working on before Katrina and I have five uh, remaining from that series that didn't get da that didn't get um, damaged and, um, okay and right. so um, and the, and the, the luckily the three I had were three were in one gallery and two were in another and that's the reason they didn't get destroyed in my studio got it got from, it uh, okay water. folks now our second piece now again uh, Dan is not limited to just the uh, canvas or the uh, the two dimensional work he's also a a sculptress, whatever you want to call that. Um, again, some of it would say uh, uh, salvage, recycling art, or whatever. And then, uh, again, a pop art. There's so many descriptions, but it's three-dimensional sculptures. And the next piece is really twofold. We're going to show you the first part, and I'm sure you're going to recognize the first part, which is clearly just—it's uh, kind of dark there, but you see it. You and I, anyone uh, near my age, and maybe even still today, has attended at least elementary school and has had a laptop desk. This is before the original laptop word is made, whereby you sat in this construction wood with the uh, built-in uh, uh, lap for you to do your drawing. So we all recognize this as a typical, and I don't know, you're gonna, did you salvage this from a school or actually buy it or build it? You didn't build it. Um, it, was, it came from a school. Okay. It came so from a was, school. Uh, all right, and now through the magic of art, what we're going to do is show you what Dan saw in this. Uh, you know, I know a lot of people used to scribble uh, notes or cut, carve or wood burn, even wood burn things in their desk, uh, which is a shame taking advantage of the old style. But Dan actually saw uh, more than that. And so what he's done is underside the uh, laptop desk, he's created a piece of art. What do we have here, Dan? Um, this is a shark made out of bubble gum. When you're sticking your bubble gum underneath the desk. Uh... Well, a lot of people used to do that. But never so creative. <laughs> huh? How did this come about? So it's it's the it's in a similar lines. Uh, at this time, I found myself in New York um, on a residency, and, and it's kind of in a continuation of the uh, of the loose leaf theme. It's the desk, so it's the same idea of um, of like I guess the the desk can also be a uh, a podium as well as a desk, especially with the you know scribbling on the top and scribing in it. Uh -huh. um, so it's uh, it's like the shark drawing. I mean, it's uh, it's called. I think I need a bigger desk. And actually, it's kind of like what lurks below. So like for you know I've, whatever reasons, I had a lot of ideas of water imagery going through my head and the dangers that lurk below. And so it's uh, this kind of idea of education and where is it going with uh, you know somebody just plays kids and and being out of school for so long and not finding accommodations. The piece came about. Well, if you're concerned, Dan has a lot more 3D stuff that may be a little more easier to exhibit in your home. So I have to admit, I'm not recommending that you don't select this piece, but I think the important thing here, that would be a difficult thing to pull off to be able to show both sides. So I think we'll, we'll fill both genres of sculpture and ease of uh, exhibition coming up in a little bit. But let's move on to another one. Moving slowly through his history, but when again, you established with the variety of work he has here. Here we have another framed, uh, looks like black wood. And let's see if we can get a, a close-up of that. Again, this is uh, 
What, what media are we talking about here? Media. Uh, this is the photograph here. A photograph, okay. It's a photograph of two and a half inch uh, um, steel bomber planes. It's uh, bombers that flew missions over uh, Middle East. It's planes uh, modern day and uh, through, uh, through the 70s, I believe, some of the planes were named after. And um, they're hanging on monofilament in this kind of uh, migrating pattern. It's called Migrating Middle East. Ah, That's the name of the cool. piece. Now, and, you uh, actually arranged them? Were these actually... Uh, I arranged them. ...on mobile somewhere else? So you oh, actually I arranged, arranged them, yeah. them, I see. Yeah. And then you superimposed a photograph of the Earth below it? Is that what that background um, is? It's just a blue... It was a blue background. Ah. A plastic background with, okay. like, just light behind it to okay. give it that bluish tint. Very nice. Now, you're going to see there are some... Uh, Hopefully we don't we don't have nothing but hope we have more than pacifists in our in our audience because we have some that may be a little disturbing to you because the the uh, military theme is is present in in several of his historical pieces but uh, for those who love planes like I do it's a great history lesson right here just oh, seeing them all together yeah, that's beautiful so really neat and what would you say again is fra typical white frame and black wood uh, I mean white mat and uh, black frame wood frame what size would you say this is for the uh, eleven by fourteen. Okay, about 14. Thanks, yeah. All right. Now we want to go back, and I think Dan's going to bring up another sculpture, and this is going to be something for you. Yeah, this one. All right. Now he's got to work on this one. This, <laughs> this requires one's, uh, pretty some... fun here. Okay. It's, let's see if we can um, get him to. Uh, it's a. Um, it's along the same lines as this kind of like adolescent creativity and the things you're given, like the toy planes and the desks and the loose leaf. This is like the childhood game of pin a tail on a donkey. Mm -hmm. There Except on this one, I made very it. Very literal. I, very literally. I made it. Uh, it's a donkey tail that you can find. I found on eBay. I didn't <laughs> I didn't have to, uh, you know, skin any donkeys. Okay. I'm not okay. advocating yeah, that. Say no animals were harmed during well, this uh, process. Well, someone did. It wasn't me. Um, <laughs> so... And then it's and just a made a life-size version. So it's a life-size tail, and I made I created this oversized, oversized pin. So it's pin kind up. of a screw part on one end. So you can basically screw it into any you know surface or wall, and it kind of you know pin the tail on a donkey, make an ass out of anything you poke it into. So this piece was more of like you know kind of making fun, but I I, I see a lot of you know political implications even in this piece as right. well, which in a, a lot of my pieces. Um, so you'll see more here. Okay. Now let's see. We're going. For those we're going, this is the next one. Um, sure, we can go ahead. They were they were created about the same. About the same? same. Yeah. Okay. Same, so same, this same. is one of my favorites. <laughs> uh, I don't know. You can see this. This is a typical Louisville slugger that all of us kids and now you adults and know from years ago. I mean, it's such a icon as Dan mentioned of our history, especially in sports. But this one. Uh, Looks like it came from Hellbound Hell Craze. What is it? What's the difference here? What is the significance? And tell us what you did on that. I'm gonna like get um, past the right. past the baton to you, Dan. <laughs> um, on this piece, it was a it was for a show called My War, and um, it was at University of New Orleans. Um, for this show, it was um, it was one of the first shows I had um, returning to New Orleans after a long stint away after Katrina. Um, I was curating a lot of shows around the country and I did like uh, four in the city as well just to get artists thinking about art, making art again. And just being so, trying to get so politically active and not being here um, in New York and California trying to get news from everyone I could. It seemed like there was so much like political activity and, and wrongdoing and, and money dispersed the wrong ways governmentally, but I think in a lot of private cases there was as well, where people would complain about money and things, but then, you know, new cars and flat screen televisions. Which was a surface point of making this piece, but mainly it's just it was about consumerism. So it's about um, you can have this you know this riot for anarchy and overthrow the government, but you want to have a really nice one. You know you want a Louis Vuitton. You want to have the you know a very stylish one. So you you know you sell politics even at any at any means. All right. So it was about a consumerist with a political agenda. Now the next one, speaking of icons, for those who can see drafted over here, should you pick this one up too as well? Uh, well, this so, one's a little less likely. Uh, hopefully um, you recognize this uh, one, Superman's this logo. This one is Superman's logo here. It's ripped off from the cape. This is called Don't Tug on Superman's Cape. Don't tear my Superman. This, don't, is, yeah. this is, again, so a like, forceful movement. I don't know if... It, after, yeah, there's a song young, called... Yeah. Maybe you should tell the young kids to turn away from the show at this point. Uh, well, okay, let us see a little bit more because you've got even more important. Yeah, this, this is fabulous. This is a uh, cast from myself. Notice that <laughs> I he, cast my arm. He uses his own and, self uh, as And kind a of, uh, kind of, it got ripped off, I guess. Yeah. It's a, uh, it, it's. I mean, literally, it's it's from based on the song "Don't Tug on Superman's Cape," where you tug on his cape, and I got a piece of his cape, but 
What was the end effect? Is he had to rip my arm off to get now, it? Did you mold that arm? Or was that a mannequin's arm? This is mine. This is cast That's from my arm. actual. Oh. From my actual. Oh, you made a yeah. cast of your whole arm. My actual, I thought you just yeah. used it this for the uh, for the tattoo. Oh no, this is this is actually yeah actually it. Well, so I have like some you know some road rash burn from where I just got ripped off and. But this would really thrown. be great for the super uh, Superman. So this is um, yeah this piece is only is about. Um, to, like in, in, in evidence, uh, you know, to spite your nose, you, you cut off your nose to spite your face. Um, to try to reach beyond a means and then, you know, wind up hurting more than it than you did any good. It's kind of the equivalent of that piece. But then in the same, in, you know, and along the lines of the other previous work, you know, superheroes and Louisville sluggers and toy planes and desks and loose sleeves. So I'm still in that area, that realm of uh, adolescence and toys and playing with things. And, you know, there's this element of violence and this element of uh, inquiry all, you know, bound up together. Yeah, we, don't want, we don't want to get too deep for the folks because, you know, we want, you do have a great sense of humor. And show mm -hmm, that. Let's, mm -hmm. let's take a look at oh, the next, yeah, next piece. I think this is yeah, really these are, neat. Yeah, this is a lot of really fun. Really neat. Can we get into this up close? This is a... A, a photo, colored photograph, or what do we do on it? This is a photograph, yeah, color photograph. Yeah. Cool. What's the title? I love it. Love uh, it's called "He Drew First Blood." He it's did. from the. It's from the uh, famous quote from uh, the Rambo movie. This okay. is Rambo hunting Bambi. Yeah. yeah. And. Um, well, again, folks, this this deer was not home <laughs> during the uh, execution of this piece. So yeah. Notice he was <laughs> nimble. He or she was nimble and was able to get away. And it's a cardboard knife, too. So. <laughs> and it's a cardboard knife. Yeah. So not much down. Right. But a great, great picture with the color. I think yeah, this, this is, is really be uh, something with today's with tongue-in-cheek kind of art. I think this is just sure. a real, real campy or, or great in a contemporary setting in an office. Again, beautifully framed and with a white mat and a perfectly matching white wood frame. And what, what would you say the dimensions on this is for the audience? 8 by 10. Basic eight by ten. Yeah. All right. This, uh, Why don't we uh, get another one? These two, these two pieces were um, were made while in a residency. This is one of my favorites. For a uh, Gulf Coast artist, and it was in um, in uh, Mandalou, France, and the La Napo Art Foundation. So that hence the uh, Napoleon here. Um, I got cardboard from a lot of street vendors, and uh, got some India ink and made a bunch of cardboard masks and went all around this. Uh, I, it, I didn't know the residency would actually be in a castle. So when I got there, oh. it was like, I, I imagined myself as all these figures, like running around this castle. So it was like so like make believe and I can, imagination could just go nuts. I, I mean, I really did feel like not only was I working with, a, with the thematics of adolescence, I felt like I was adolescent again in this place. So you know, I'm Rambo in the gardens and I'm Napoleon on the, on the top of the castle towers and I was Clint Eastwood in the, in the, in the, uh, in the gravel between the two uh, Tears of the Castle in my studio, and I was 20 different characters all around. And some people, a lot of tourists would come and you know, they would come over like into the beach and over some rocks, and I'd be there with a mask on of with a monster. Mask on, really? And I would hear this kid screaming, I'd take it off and <laughs> <laughs> running away. So, but I think this is a great one because it's, uh, it's definitely up tempo, the typical Napoleon uh, position, but with a contemporary jacket. Really, just a great one. I think this and, is one of the. And really strangely, fun it ones. comes in like along, like in, in really along the lines of the kind of work I would. Make as a kid with as you know, kid. homemade masks and yeah. things, and yeah. kind of yeah. stepped it up Child and all that intent. Yeah. Okay, yeah. now we're moving up to some more black and white photography, which has always been <coughs> my favorite. Uh, I'm, I'm an oversized piece. Let's see if we can get a close up of this. And this is uh, again showing, uh, for one respect, tats uh, as art. I mean, that's commonly known today that one's taking their bodies to new levels with all the different. Uh, uh, scenarios that one does, linoleum of life, I call it. But anyway, uh, let's see how that's better. So tell us about this piece. What's um, the name of it? First th this is called "I Want to Destroy You." It's, uh, Ooh, they're all based on rock uh, titles, rock uh, band titles of their songs. Okay. Um, this uh, it was a series I did called Supernatural when I had moved back to uh, to New Orleans, and uh, you could still see the residue everywhere, and the lines, and the smell, and it was, I mean, much better than uh, when I had first came back to visit. But this is when I came back to move and I did this series. And um, Before we got the new lemon fragrance? Before the new lemon fragrance, that's okay. right, that's right. And it was a lot of, uh, had a lot to do with water. You see, I'm standing in a pool on a chair. I see that. And I have this boat and I'm the, I'm the Kraken. And I drew my face on my throat and put my head all the way back. So you see in the top is my chin. And the chin, I see And then it, I yeah. have my friend behind me with two extra arms. So we're grabbing a boat uh, and this kind of four-armed Kraken coming out of the water. And there's this idea of these monsters coming out of the water, you know, uh, well, okay, literally Katrina, with the... Yeah, Katrina, wow. 
Well, literally, in the what the of Katrina is certainly, the literally, what the chemicals left behind and the lead, and, but also just you know as a metaphor for the other things that came out as an aftermath, right. like a lot of right. ugliness, but. Right. It's, you know, but, you know it's just well happened. represented. And again, this is not for everybody, folks, but certainly I think <laughs> uh, really well done with regard to what you're trying to express. Okay, you got another one there for the sure, folks? Sure, yeah. Here's another one in that series. What size was this about? This is um, I think that one's, uh, I want to say, 22 by yeah. 16, roughly. Yeah. And this one's probably this, almost the same. Almost the same, a little, little, yeah, yeah. This yeah. one's really cool. For those who saw Deliverance, did you recognize this? Let's see. <laughs> Can we get it? There we go. Look. That's not the um, Loch Ness Monster that you see in City Park with the lights for Christmas. It's, uh, in fact, it might be, I think, the artist's hand again. It's, yeah, it's, it's my hand. It's on a, it's a arm. Tin, arm, right? It's a 10-foot um, piece of plywood that I cut out and drew my arm on wow. and set it into the, uh, into the lagoon there right across from the museum behind the bridge in City Park. You didn't have any problem with the uh, authorities? Doing no, it? I just went out there about 20 feet and dropped it. I did, well, the, the one, one, one big goose had a problem with it. I, like, <laughs> I kind of got bit. I was thinking I'm a two-legged I got geese, bit man. on it. I got to grip my shirt a bit. But actually, oh. a friend of mine, he got, he's the one that got bit. I'm, I just shoot it. But uh, So we went no, out there I mean, and none, he none helped me out and threw it uh, in. No, no. People were taking pictures with it. And well, I guess so. Putting their kids like in, like, in the background. Fantastic. And yeah, yeah. No, everyone thought it was great. And actually, someone from the park actually uh, helped me out to find the spot. So... It's actually everyone well, was great. really, really and, great where, about it. Yeah, and when was about what part of the year was this done? Obviously in summer, a warmer part. Yeah, this was done in September. This is called uh, September Spawn the Monster. So you won't see this in the Christmas in the uh, in no, the, no. Unless okay. they maybe if they want to rebuild it and put it there. Apparently. Maybe if, yeah, if everyone one falls down or they want to have a companion, huh? Right. So it's what, the idea again, of the what Loch Ness. What do we title this? I think we skipped this was September Spawn the Monster. Yeah. September spawns the monster. All yeah. right, that's and cool. uh, so it's like the like a Loch Ness, the idea of Loch Ness in this image, or it's a giant stick his arm come out the water. But I really wanted cool. to I wanted to be the Loch Ness. Really yeah. cool. Yeah. Okay, folks, we're talking to Dan Tag T A G U E. He's um, affiliated with Johnson Ferraris Gallery. He's done numerous group and on his own solo exhibit, which unfortunately has just closed. So you. You can't see it in person, but as we mentioned, you can go to his website, dantag.com, was it? Dantag Studio. Dantagstudio.com, mm -hmm. and see additional pieces as well as the ones we're showing. Also, please don't hesitate. You see our director's been kind enough to throw those numbers up. Dan and I both would love to hear from you, as, as we always do, and uh, we're glad to express uh, a little bit more about his uh, work or any other question you might have about it. But meanwhile, we're, we've slowly, I guess, trudged our way through history, uh, through Dan's extensive life history, and we've got him up to what would be probably his most recent exhibit. So I, I guess he was working on this in maybe 2008, and is that it, 2009? It's, right? I started the first one in 2006, and then, and not, not intended to be a series, the Folded Dollar Bill series, and then when I returned, uh, I guess uh, at the end of 2000. Seven, I had started this series, and then by mid-2008, I had uh, accumulated uh, 20 of these images, and, and that's when Jonathan, uh, well, Jonathan approached me to do a show, and, and we worked on it together, and he really wanted me to really focus and hit this series hard, and, uh, and I had about five or six at the time, and then really just stayed in the studio and focused, and got a, I got many of these political images out of folded well, this dollar This is going to give a new meaning to origami. <laughs> uh, and I know, I remember as a kid, my grandfather would uh, take uh, dollar bills maybe, and uh, in those days were a little more valuable, and fold them in, uh, into some type of exotic. And so it's the old Japanese tradition of origami, but he's put a, certainly a very significant meaning to a lot of these. Again, a lot of political background. But just in uh, the ordinary days of, uh, that we that we look at. So rather than tell you any more, let's go ahead and take a look at the first piece because these are the larger pieces we have in the other studio. Because you can see that uh, as we draw back, um, there's a certain bills. What kind of denominations can we make that up? Um, this is a, I think it's a ten dollar bill. Ten dollar bill. Okay. Look how fabulous this is folded. All right. And what do we right, call this? Twenty dollar bill prompts. Um, this was the cost of war. This is one of the much later dollar bills, actually. Okay. Um, this is one like the, this is one of the culminating bills from the first series of bills. Um, the first series, I had images like the American Idol, uh, mm -hmm. the State of Fear, the Heat is on, the End is near, Trust No One, like all folded from from a dollar bill. And um, yeah, the series the series got me uh, quite a bit of. Uh, 
notoriety on the, on the uh, internet and, and uh, just people all around really responding to it in magazines and all over. It was got, now, all of these got pieces that are, are actually uh, paintings or, or, or artwork are actually framed and pr the, the same with the magnificent white frame and the great black uh, wood frame. So that way it really uh, just very gives a dramatic portrait mm -hmm. to the content that's in the, that's displayed. So, uh, what size would we say this is a pretty? This big is piece. pretty large in here. I think yeah. this is maybe about uh, forty by thirty-two, yeah. something so around that size. From yeah. what we see over here, it's a very large. Well, not very mm -hmm. large, but certainly larger than the others. Mm -hmm. And in today's, for everyone knows, uh, it seems like the larger the piece of work today is much more uh, of interest. I mean, that, that seems to be the way they're going. Let's go take a look at another one, and uh, as we move along in this series, again, of the Folded Dollar Bill series, what we have coming up next. Uh, oh, uh, we're going back to sculpture, but again, with the uh, dollar bill in mind, this is great. Hopefully you can see it. It's an obvious, hopefully you need to give you clues of the name of this one, but go ahead, Dan. Spoil it for the folks. Tell them what you call this it. This is the money tree here. Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, the idea of contemplating good and evil. It's a cherry tree, and the leaves are actually made from dollar bills. So you get this idea of, of contemplating good and evil and, and George Washington. Yeah, you're paralleling down. George Washington. But it's, it's in his home pot, so it's just, you know, it's in this kind of terracotta of like a living room plant, home interior plant. And um, so, yeah, it's a lot of puns on, on a lot of early uh, folklore and uh, just the idea of money. And, and it came at a time just before the economy really crushed. So the piece had some, had some uh, you know, some really good um, feedback from it because it was up while the market really just tanked. And uh, it, it kind of switched meanings overnight. <laughs> and, you know, it's, you know it's, it's good about art. Sometimes art takes its own life and its own meaning with other situations that happen around us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would, I'd be kind of concerned that you wouldn't have people behind your back plucking this tree in today's, <laughs> today's bad economy. Taping uh, them back together. You'd be stripping down to strictly the cherries. I hope not. <laughs> really, a, a great piece, and because then you, you know, you can use it decoratively in the home or the rest, but just a, a really featured piece that I think uh, adds a whole new dimension to the uh, dollar bill and to the whole term. So you explained it nicely. All right, let's move on to another. Back to the uh, framework. Um, the next piece is called Peace and War. This is a piece I was, uh, this is the newest series of work that was just up at uh, Jonathan's. Okay. Um, it was the idea of the idea, the show was called Cost of uh, Cost of War, Price of Freedom, and that's, Cost of War was in that show as well, the f previous the folded bill. Saw, yeah, but, and so the idea of like, you know, is the, cost of, is the cost of war the price of freedom? And then, you, you know, Benjamin Franklin says there's no good war and there's no bad peace. And then on the flip side, you have Kennedy, who says, unfortunately, um, uh, to, to, main, to maintain peace, you must prepare for war. So the two go hand in hand. So the one eagle is grabbing the arrows, and the other is grabbing the olive branch. Yeah, let's, let's go a little slower, on because this piece has so much. Um, let's see if we can get close. So this is actually, again, a, the, the background is... From a do certain dollar bill uh, denomination? From the one dollar bill, yeah. That's a one dollar bill. Mm -hmm. And whereby you're able to do the mirror image of right. it. Is that correct? Yes. So you flipped it over mirror image. Now these are fo photos of the dollar bill or what exactly? These are scanned in actually. They're okay. scanned in at super high resolution so I can, when I blow them up, they retain every detail. Wow. So, I mean, it, when you look up close, it looks like the actual, it's like a fabric instead of paper. Okay. And so then again, then you took, the only thing I would say is that for peace, maybe we could have, uh, Instead of going with the, you have the mirror image, which is identical, of course, of the flip flop of the war eagle, maybe a dove might have been, you know, and it would mess up the symmetry you mm -hmm. have, but it's same. But great, and no, notice people, it's labeled peace and war, each one's properly designated. So a lot of meaning here, very, very important, a lot of depth, and uh, uh, the detail is that's what I was concerned. How were you able to get so much detail? It was from the soup from an extremely high resolution scans Scan. from the dollar bill Excellent. at like nine thousand or ten thousand DPI. Wow. And these are the first I started to actually draw on, like the edges and the okay, eagles yeah, and the words. I don't think this has got to have some enhancement. Yeah, this is graphite on where peace and war is graphite, and the edges of the eagle is is drawn on. So with you've graphite highlighted pencil those with uh, graphite. To really, yeah, to really bring it out, so the edges uh, become more stark and the image kind of uh, right. protruding a little more. So it wouldn't be lost. Uh, right, absolutely. The, yeah. And that becomes even more prominent in the in the next piece, which 
Patrick. We'll see more in line bit. with the series. But yeah. anyway, just take. A, and again, this is a real large piece. What, what size would we say? Oh, this, this one is about? probably sixty by sixty by yeah. Uh, forty. Yeah, it's probably the largest piece you brought today, mm -hmm. for us, other than mm -hmm. the sculpture of the money tree. Yeah. So really neat. All right, we're going to take another look. And friends, don't don't hesitate to give us a call. We're running uh, not short on time. We have a little extra time and don't have too many more pieces. So we'd love to hear from you. Take advantage while you can. Uh, it's great to speak to the artist directly. I mean, you know, uh, sometimes you don't get that privilege when you go to a gallery other than the opening exhibit to actually speak uh, directly to the artist about his work. So don't hesitate to give us a call on either one of our numbers, and our director will put you right through. But meanwhile, let's go ahead and take a look at another one and uh, see what we have coming up. So, let's see. Oh, this one is a love machine. It's called mm -hmm. Love Machine. It's a, a tank. And it's from folded dollar bills, and uh, what I did is, is took an image of a tank and then uh, just made it into two, like, a, like extremely contrast, so I just had this kind of skeleton of a tank and then superimposed it over the bill and cut it out, and then what you have left is the tank image and dollar bills, again with the drawing around the edges. Well, this one really baffles me, how you're able to uh, fold the bills, probably keep them within the confines of that skeletal sense. Uh, maybe I'm just dumb in how that works. But well, yeah, uh, uh, it takes some. It takes some time for sure. It right, definitely because, takes some time. Because I mean, the intricacy there. I mean, uh, folding is one thing, but then also having to fold and keep it within a, a prescribed format. The others mm -hmm. have been maybe loosely defined. So. Right. Uh, your definition comes with actually the folding rather than a, a, a perimeter boundary. But mm -hmm. here, this is certainly uh, just amazing to see how you've been able to keep and even get a 3D dimension with the zero of, I guess that's the zero from the one dollar. Is that what, wherever it comes from? The, no, an O from the one, huh? Uh, the, the from o the zero from, from the 20. I'm sorry, this is a 20? Yeah, that's a zero from the two zero. Ah, yeah. okay. Yeah. But, look, I, but, but that whole whatever, and again, I'm forgotten my uh, description what design that is of that not pure and that what, uh, octagon it's not an octagon I don't know what that um, uh, whatever you call that shape is uh, it just has a tremendous 3d effect like it's a side compartment mm -hmm. kind of just really glares off the paper as if that is really projecting forward uh, almost in, like I say in a 3d effect mm -hmm. and I don't know if that's what you intended or not but it it's just oh phenomenal. yeah certainly and that's what's what's you know that's what comes in with the scans you can get that really crisp high resolution yeah and it's the other for the most around. part seem you know a little so there's some re relief like further back where something will project out a little mm -hmm. bit but this one is so significant. I mean, it looks it just it looks like something you added on or glued right. on to it to affix it to, sure. to give it that dimensional thing. These came along as, as also as part of like an economic war as well, where the camouflage is the green from dollar bills. It it works almost as camouflage. Okay, and uh, let's talk a little bit about the size on this one. Um, this one is is uh, sixty by. Uh, it's more square. It's like 32 by 60. Okay. And what kind of, uh, is this done on paper? What are we scanning this on? This is on, um, this is on paper. This is on a really thick um, um, inkjet printer paper. Uh, archival rag paper, okay. so it's got archivalness, you know. It's, so, and well, for the most part, we didn't discuss them. Most of the ones that we've been seeing on this are on a similar type paper, is that right? Yeah, it's called a G clay process, and it's uh, archival ink, and it's on archival rag paper that's acid free. So, can you go with it a little slow on that process? How do we do? You, you get the paper, and I know archival paper used in a lot of the museums, a lot of work. It's museum rag yeah, paper. Yeah, 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 right. And so, after that, you're you're scan. Well, first of all, you're scanning this in, uh, blowing it up. Mm -hmm. uh, to whatever resolution you get, and then how are you, how are you super fixing it to the paper? Is it just it's run through printed on? Yeah, actually printed, printed on, on with paper. archival ink. Yeah. Ah, okay, yeah. okay. Right. And um, so this, I mean, this series also involved uh, uh, Apache helicopters and F-16 jets. Uh, you know, soldiers. I had a destroyer made from the Treasury building on the ten-dollar bill. Wow, it's yeah, an that's... entire series of these machines, these economic. War machines. Yeah, so obviously you didn't focus just strictly on the uh, 
on the tank as these symbols. So you took some of the other obvious uh, symbols of war, ma uh, machines of war. Machines of war, right. And uh, did them in, in different kinds of perspectives. Right, right. right? And, and I mean, as far as, the, as far as like a war, you know, there's billions of dollars spent in the war, but also the war that was happening here with the economy and just, in, you know, bailouts and these. Right. And so the generals are, you know, consumers, and the, or foot soldiers are consumers, maybe. And so had, had you envisioned, I know you said you started this in 2006, right? The folded, the first folded bill was in 2006. Okay, and I've forgotten right? when Iraq started. I mean, that was... Well, the first folded bill was uh, the Osama War. And then what I, that's what I'm trying to figure that's out, what I, what I how, whether it. you were intuitive to the whole war coming, or whether it actually had established, you uh, know, started... Oh, in eh? it, was, it was in full... Oh, okay, so full yeah, so it wasn't, yeah. it wasn't you were this prophet of doom for us here that I you... I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> that, that you so, are you going to see uh, really happy bills? Well, I mean, I'd be glad to hear it. I'll be asking <laughs> you what's going to happen to the stock market next year, you know, if you can see that far, because, I mean, that's a great... But still, you're taking something that's near and dear to all of us because we all have questioned uh, the need, especially to spend the bin, just like we are now. We're questioning the need of so much stuff that we have to outlay these huge funds and usually unlimited, like we're talking about health care now and stuff, mm -hmm. but also mm -hmm. war. I mean, we, you know, in one respect, uh, we're backing away from one country. But are, are we just really substituting, moving, and escalating in another country, in future countries as it seems to be uh, coming down the pipeline? So right. um, it seems like our war machine is always at the ready to jump in <laughs> anywhere. Right. And that's, that's, I think, something that concerns us all because not only of the dire bloodshed that it includes, whether you're politically uh, savvy there but, or, or mor morally savvy, but the idea of, you know, how can you continue to fund this? I mean, where right. do you just get the funds? And, well, that, and like I say, it's easier to ask that question, I guess, to health care or something else than the war, because we always think war is our be-all and end-all to save our country. But health care and others, which may not seem dramatic, are just as dramatic and just as, unfortunately, plenty full of mm -hmm. dollars. Okay, let's well, enough of that. I don't want to scare the people away Well, much. also, well, Eisenhower even said it, like, it comes, you know... Oh, way back in the... These, for those these, who know Eisenhower yeah. and saw him... Yeah. Yeah, I mean, one of his speeches I heard was just uh, televised, speaking about war, and oh, I mean, it was just amazing. But very... Typical, I don't want to say Republicans are cold, but I mean, that's a typical, you know, way they describe it. It was very analytical, you know, very clinical. But when he described it, it would just penetrate to your bone marrow sure. because it was exactly talking about this war manipulation, you know. He said it's humanity that hangs on an iron cross after war, and, and it's education and health care that suffer the most yeah, at the hands of it. There you go. Okay, well, let's move on because I know we're uh, digressing a little. Not really, but uh, right. digressing from the visual part of it anyway. Okay, let's see what we have next. I know we're drawing to a and close on this. Here's uh, yeah, where I say where consumers can, can possibly uh, you know, uh, simulate the role of the, of the foot soldiers out there as far as uh, you know, spending and buying and jobs. But Okay, again, we've taken... Uh, now, this looks like it's not only... Uh, not all, is it just um, obviously you can see some print which would be the dollar bill or the mm -hmm. denomination but is there something else going on some of the others where there's no uh, visualization of any kind of pattern design like no, it's, it's all from folded bills it's all from folded yeah. bills okay this takes it also back to the early much earlier work well not much earlier a few years earlier um, where, where with like the bomber toys and things this is from one of those little green plastic army men Okay. Yeah. So that's well, that, the image that this, what this that image you is use. from. Yeah. So it's, oh, definitely. It's, I see. It. Things but come here, full circle so much. You know? Well, now that we're getting so close, we can see. But from a distance, it seemed like from the right shoulder down, that was so prominent that that was not a dollar bill that mm -hmm. was there. You know, because it, it actually looked like um, I don't want to say armament, but I mean, uh, like it was textured. You know, uh, which of course is what you want to show, but all this like the booting and all. Now, yeah, of course, here you see it, but and then even the gun, you can see like kind of like right, the uh, gun clip right. from a it's from the just, piece of a building. Until you get like very, very close, you really can't. Yeah. You know, I didn't think this one was exclusively a denomination. I thought you had other materials, no, yeah, yeah. paper materials or drawings here. It's, it's like really going for it. all the different textures from different bills. Like I wanted to really focus on like the buildings and the really like tight, tight graphic print to really get the, the camouflage feel really, 
you know, going through this and how, piece. And I guess, I don't know, I don't think I've asked this before. How do you also get the multicolorization? Is this a different process than what we talked about on these others? Like here, having the yellows, the greens. Oh, it's just the new bills. Uh, the oranges and the yellows are just so bright on the new bills. I started oh, okay. to incorporate those. I even incorporated some of that that kind of crazy K and B five, that purple five on the yes. new bill. It's like that exact K and B purple really? color. I know, I know so well as a kid. Uh, yeah, I incorporated some uh, that color in a few of the bills. But see, as well. like here, right here. I mean, this almost looks like snakeskin mm -hmm. right there. That that whatever swath of. Yeah. Uh, of material as it goes up his shoulder mm -hmm. and up to his to half of his head. I mean, that really doesn't to me look anything recognizable as a bill, other mm -hmm. than over to the left when it's yellow and you can see some verbiage. In yeah, the some are some are yeah hard to recognize. Especially like I have a destroyer where it's just the windows from the Treasury Building on the ten dollar bill, so it's hard uh -huh. to tell it's even from the wow. bill at all. From it a bill really at looks all. like you know, delineated really like cool. a, like a, like it should be on a ship. Okay, and you call this one again. I missed the title. This one was Soldier. Soldier, well, and, uh, pretty but the purple I was using a in a folded bill called "I Am Free," and right in the center was this like glimmer was this purple, purple, KB like purple coming out of the oh, from the five cool. dollar bill. Yeah, uh, yeah, that must have been really cool. Yeah, really now, what, what's the approximate? And again, this is on the archival paper and mm -hmm. matted. Is this, um, this one's a bit smaller than the others. This one's, uh, I guess, about 24 by 18. This 24 one. by 18. Yeah. Is it all? I can't see from this distance. Is it matted and framed as well? Same as the others, yeah, the black frame. So continue the yeah. same. Yeah. Okay, I think, what do we have? One or two more We're coming up on? I know we got at least one more. Yeah. And then we're going to keep talking. Don't. Ah, here we go. Yeah. Now, this to me looked like your poster. I, I mean, I don't want to say, but it just glad to me as a poster, as opposed to even though it involved a lot of the other work. It just mm -hmm. it just shouted out at me that this is a you know a poster that you've done. Tell us what you consider this. And what's um, your title? This title is called Fifty Famous Americans. Um, it's and it should look like a poster. It's from uh, it's from the posters that that are hanging outside of movie theaters that. Uh, uh, like movie posters to announce uh -huh. a movie coming, uh -huh. and um, it's it's the 50 highest rated um, films with the word American in the title. Uh -huh. um, so I I just took out the word American and the placement, the color, the design, the font, everything that it would be on the poster, and and superimposed 50 on top of each other. And so that's why there's a the space at the bottom that's that's a pretty significant space at the bottom. That's uh -huh. where you would have all the titling and the producer and the credits. Uh, all, and all the credits, stuff, yeah. right. But what I don't understand is so all the different fonts and the different sizes of the word American, mm -hmm. was that in the original composition or you took exactly it? Exactly in an original composition. In it. Exactly from an exact size, exact structure, exact everything. That's where it would be. So you have like American in Paris, you have American History X, you have uh, American Beauty, American Gigolo, American Graffiti. There's so and so, many. <laughs> like you say, like, so one was American Gigolo. Let's say the one in the middle. I, I died. Let's say the so you're just saying you just truncated the Gigolo and used that same font and size of oh maybe not the same size but certainly exact same, same size exact same size everything's so size exactly too. where it would be on the poster so yeah so and all it's, you a did was, it's a standard size of those posters as well wow and yeah. so there and there were fifty listing identification fifty all fifty was shown on the on the poster. Of the show, movies, titles? All had American in it on the poster. And, and there were 50 listed on the show. Oh, that actually is 50 of them. This is 50 right here. Oh, wow. Yeah, I took, I took all the rest of the graphic off and the rest of the title off and just right. put the word American. Just focused it on. Yeah, and, and I superimposed all 50. So that right they all would fit in, in, in the prescribed space. Yeah, and in the spaces, I mean, that's the size that they are, like when you go to see like the little marquee right. boxes. So, okay, so again, they're all this, pretty standard size. Yeah. So this is the standard size of, of mm -hmm. a poster? Of the poster, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. And, and this is more along the lines of, uh, of uh, a, ne a new series that I'm working on about uh, American history. Okay, so well, some of it will be tongue-in-cheek. We, we have a good, good ten minutes, so let's talk. On this, uh, okay, that's what I said. Uh, on this one, um, once again, the coloring is identical. So the ones that were in red were in red on the poster. Just as it was, yeah. And so, again, for me, not understanding the naivete of an artist, so you've taken them, you've juxtaposed them, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then how did you reassemble them? That's what I'm saying. I, that's the part I can't get. Oh, uh, this is now, all... This isn't scanning anything. No, this is all done on, on computer. Well, yeah, yeah. You scan in the posters and you take the word off. Then you take the word off. Well, actually, I take everything else away from it. I'm not necessarily take okay, the word right. off. Right. If I, some, but this is a, this piece is actually more of a study. It's going to become a, more okay. like a larger painting. 
Wow. Yeah, so this cool. is really new stuff that I'm working on here. So you're getting the first glimpse at a... a sneak preview for sneak the Sneak preview. No one's seen this. No one outside of the studio well, except for I'm me and my dog have by seen, because, <laughs> seen this piece. So. Now I'm just enthralled by it because, and I'm not trying to make a give away your processes, but at the same time, it's, it's hard for me to understand as, you know, as just a, uh, an observer how you were able to do this. So it's, uh, for the most part, in virtual reality that you took of this and reassembled it. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Just magnificent. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, let's, let's go on. Like I said, we still have a few more minutes for anyone who wants to call. But let's talk about your future because people want to know about that. Because we said, once again, folks, let me reappraise you. It's Dan Tag, T-A-G-U-E. Um, his website to see some of these and some of the other pieces that maybe you didn't see is Dan Tag Studio. All one word, no hyphen space. All one word. Dan Tag Studio dot com. And all you can go if you go to Jonathan Ferraris, he has a link so you can flip over there. But just as easy to see directly if you want to see Dan's work. Also, at Good Children Gallery does some images. It's a part uh, of a co-op in the Ninth Ward. I've Lord. heard of it. Yeah, in the Ninth Ward. You wanted, know what street it's on by chance? It's on Saint Claude. On Saint Claude. Saint Claude, so. and, and the cross street is Mizan. Okay. Uh, um, yeah, I've, a co-op I haven't been. I, I, well. One of our earlier sculptors participate because his studio is almost in that in Araby or something and he participated and he kept telling us about it but I'm just not that familiar with those areas gallery. Yeah, it's a lot of great yeah. shows happening oh, there great. So. and you still have a couple pieces there um, well, I'm I'm part of the co-op there. Oh, okay. Me and, me and but are you you exhibiting now there too? Or no? No, no, not oh, right okay, now. But okay. there's yeah, there's some great. Well, shows. then let's talk about the future. The future is now. Sure. We saw one semblance of it as we just uh, finished the show uh, with the, what you brought. Let's talk about you saying you're focusing on history. Is that what you're saying? Um, yeah, my next uh, my next uh, uh, studio project is called uh, American History 101. So I'm taking a lot of images, and some are like, of course, 50 Famous Americans more tongue-in-cheek. Some will be more serious, you know. Okay. Be yeah, because that's real lighthearted for you. Right. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Which yeah. I, I was saying, is there it's a redemptive good. value to you, going through well, this catharsis that, that, we, too, that yeah. we're now, yeah, yeah, right. when it comes to sometimes the sunshine yeah. and sometimes seeing the light? Uh, no, but this yeah. is just, again, a mix-up, because we've seen a playful mix-up, mm-hmm. ultra all this stuff. This so. is going to be, uh, I think it's going to be a lot more playful uh, work. I mean, I, I think it will be insightful, but I think it will have a lot more playful air to it. Mm-hmm. And speaking of the of the desk, it's going to incorporate a classroom full of desks. But oh, really? they will be just the tops, and then they'll be considered a, a podium. Right. So um, they'll be like scribbling on the desk and pencil, and then carving on top, and it'll be history lessons, but then superimposed with these kind of adolescent prankster uh, images, you know, incorporated into it, into the history lesson on the desks. And but there'll be much other visuals and posters and uh, paintings and drawings. And so these are these are. Uh, these are uh, these certainly are here, if not here yet. You're right, right. It'll culminate, and, and within within a year, or so you'll probably see a lot more of this uh, getting closer to next November. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Yeah. Well, yeah, so, that, well, so that's uh, that's great. Now, um, and right now, the, the cat's out right there. This is it. This yeah. Is it. <laughs> <laughs> you don't mean November this this November? November coming. So this will be oh. this will be more of the project on towards prospect so you, two. You, so you're gonna be able to produce that type of portfolio from now to November? Next November. Oh no, that's what I said. Right. Back with oh, prospect yeah. two. Yeah, it'll be just Oh, be okay. That's why I asked with, you when you said November. Right. You kept implying like it was the November oh, no, upcoming. No, you know? no, no. This is I, this is a I lot mean, a lot of work ahead of me. Some of this work is yeah. <laughs> so yeah, tedious. This is, I don't this know is how, a lot of how you can project to do one between now and November. Anything else? Tell us about the, uh, the new spirit that you want to bring to the audience to, to tease them, to, to get them ready for you. Anything else? Um, nah, I mean, I, I think it's going to be a lot of visuals. I think, uh, I, think it's, I think a lot of people will be receptive to it. And I think you know, a lot of people are receptive to this work. It's going to be a similar vein, but you know, it's, I think it's going to be a lot more uh, uh, play, playfully uh, sarcastic. Well, that's good because, again, you know, some people might take you that you're so serious that it might be a turnoff to some people because, you know, again, these are strong statements and some people maybe, especially in this tough economy, don't want to face those kind of things. Mm-hmm. Men, if they have to face them day to day in their own individual style or, mm-hmm. or life, that uh, they don't want to be reminded of this. So they, and uh, I guess that's that old adage of like why movies do so well. You know, movies, the movie industry has been shrinking and shrinking until until the economy turned around. And now yeah. everyone you know, including our local uh, Britannia, is just thriving because people mm-hmm. want that escapism. So, uh, right. so that same thing here, that whole new, that whole new look. Well, I think we'll have a perhaps a broader appeal, especially in the current. Situation. Yeah, yeah, I hope. Yeah, no, I hope so. Right. 
Okay. Uh, well, again, we've been talking to Dan Tag. Uh, we want to uh, talk a little bit about some future since we have a few more minutes. We'll talk a little bit about upcoming situation. As we mentioned, uh, Jonathan Ferreira, from which Dan is affiliated, is kind enough to uh, give us another, another artist for next month. Next month uh, originally was going to be another vacation for me, but since I took longer, I uh, canceled it, and uh, I believe Sidoni Villery, a well-known artist for, for those who are in the art community, is going to show us some of her primetime stuff, and I'm hoping that she's going to be exhibiting in Jonathan Ferreira. Um, again, uh, you know, we're here once a month. Again, a call to artists, just like everyone does. Uh, in some part of November, we will be emailing all of the artists that we know and the different, uh, not only the galleries, but the different mar art markets for solicitation for next year. Our show, the way we've arranged it now, is uh, once a month, so we're really only allowed to show 12 artists per year. So because of that uh, limitation, finite limitation, and with the plethora of people out there in the art community, uh, you can see what the constraints are. So what we do is ask the artist to give us their top two choices on that calendar we sent out for next year, and hopefully we can fill. But again, it would be the first 12 that we get in that uh, are on vacant dates. So please uh, be on the lookout for that. Or if you're interested and you don't, you're not on our mailing list, Go ahead and send me an email. You can send it to uh, Bob, B O B, at R R E V U E dot com. To our website, Bob at double R E V U E dot com. Now, for those who think I stutter, and that's why I have the double R and not familiar with our umbrella of shows, um, the R is always prefaced preface with the topic that we're doing. As you know, our, our major show, the weekly show, Restaurant Review, which, as we said in the early part of the show, uh, returns back live next Wednesday with new, new restaurants and hopefully uh, emerging musical guests. Uh, it's been our pioneer program for 10 years on the station. Artist Review has just come on uh, maybe the last three or four years, originally haphazardly done to replace uh, a restaurant that um, didn't make it, had to cancel at the last minute. But now recognizing the uh, importance of the art to the community as well as the restaurant and the, the food and the music, we've now given it its air and at least give it uh, time so you can check the schedule and, and watch for the program. Um, Again, we want to tell you that uh, we've, we've got a lot of shows coming up for you. So, And also our third show, Real Review, we'll be doing some stuff. Uh, hopefully you'll take note of that on Tuesday nights on the other channel, 78, because when we start taping, we're going to do some stuff. I know everybody loves American Idol, where there's a young lady doing New Orleans Idol. And we're going to be bringing her on and some of the talent. So you'll see that the new, the new real new all, real review will go away from R E E L to R E A L, and we'll, it's going to be more of a variety show. We're going to have some politicians on. We're going to look all around New Orleans and the variety of our, our city. So that way we'll have it covered not only from our major shows of, of music, food, and art, but all the other genres or topics that we normally don't cover. So it should be interesting. So watch for that coming up uh, sometime in October on Tuesday nights. Okay, um, once again, Dan, any parting words? I mean, um, words of wisdom for us? <laughs> um, just keep looking for me. Uh, keep looking I'll for Remember his name? Uh, are you going to be... Uh, on your website, do you have any um, way to start keep people in, working on uh, informed about your progress on your new, especially your new direction? Sure, I'm going to I'm going to keep a current page on it, and there's also Good. my email there, so Good. feel free to right. contact. Yeah, because again, two years is a long time away, so not that everybody forgets, but again, with all the people we have, so go to his website, check it periodically. Until then, till next week at Artist Review, I mean Restaurant Review, we'll see you at the Art Galleries between now and the end.